no nation welcome in to another episode of the renegade rundown live with your host george georgitis obviously of the renegade report right here my beautiful co-host as always jen santi at jen santi 1890 on x and you know the kind of star of the show reached out uh he was gracious enough to come on here and spend a bunch of time with us on this live stream zach smith of menace to sports he also has a brand new show he's working on i'm excited for him to tell you guys about um you know all the big 10 rumors really great kind of a poignant person to have on here today man thanks for joining us no thanks for having me on i'm excited thank you yeah we were That's talking excited. we were talking in the pre-production and it's you know one of the hottest uh subjects in Knoll nation and i kind of threw it in the <laughs> title the latest rumor um, out there on the streets and uh, several people have put podcasts out about it some pretty uh, influential people it seems like february is the date that's the date everybody's here and hopefully that if you're going to get an announcement anytime before that august 15th date it's going to be august 15th or sometime in february from florida state and we were talking like i said before about the possible matchups uh, what do you think man florida state to the big 10 are you all in on that or what Oh, I'm all in. It's just, it's, you know, it's, it's about logistics. It's about how to get it done. You know, ACC contracts. I mean, the best thing they could, they could have happen in Tallahassee is the ACC to just fall apart, which it should. I mean, if I'm Clemson, if I'm Miami, if I'm Florida State, I'm looking at our conference commissioner like, hey, fuck you, dude. Like, you put <laughs> such a shitbag conference together that we went 13-0 and and won your conference, and it wasn't respected enough nationally to get us in the playoffs. That's on you. Like, you put these teams together. You put the schedule together. We did what we were supposed to do. And if that happened in the SEC, that happened in the Pac-12 this year, if that happened in the Big Ten, we'd be in. So they just got to get through the, the dynamics of, are they going to fundraise and pay the massive buyout to get out? Or are they going to kind of rally the troops and get everyone else to leave too? Um, yeah. But I, as, a, as a Midwest football guy and a Big Ten fan, man, I'm here for it. Bring me Florida State in the horseshoe every other year. Like, that would be <laughs> badass. And I, I would I, love it. Oh, my God. And I grew up a Florida State fan secretly um, back in, <laughs> it was probably, what, early 90s. So I was I was born in 84. So I was probably like nine, ten. I think it was nine when Charlie Ward was the quarterback. And, man, that fucking seminal with the, the, the spear on fire, I was like, this is the most gangster shit ever. Like, I, I, I got a Florida State starter jacket. I was all in. <laughs> and that's why we look at these people oh sideways, God. you know, on ESPN when they talk about FSU, like it's this lesser place. You got a commissioner talking about so-called Power Five. And like you said, Jim Phillips just absolutely ghost. I've got the Beetlejuice meme load up, but uh, I don't want to get copyright struck, but it's just, just absolutely doing nothing. Jim Phillips, he's like a lame duck joke. <laughs> of a commissioner but but yeah there's so many amazing matchups uh the latest intel for us and you're absolutely right the logistics are the hardest part of it um it's 2025 that's your hope you hope you can get in there yeah. by 2025 but but yeah the matchups michigan ohio state you had a oregon all these other teams it would be unreal and and the thing that jen kind of harps on is fox the eyeballs and you mentioned it the spear osceola all those movies in the 90s and the 2000s the program like that's badass shit. And it's almost like that they're scared of it, of it popping off or something. And Fox isn't. Fox wanted to just let's let Fox get their hands on that thing, please. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. It'll be, I mean, it's, listen, it's happening, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a matter of when. I mean, when and how. Yeah. Yeah. The minute the Big Ten and SEC went and grabbed the teams they grabbed, every, every other conference, it's like, it's just a slow death or quick death. The Pac 12 died quickly. The ACC is going to die. It's a matter of when they die. And I think Florida State's like, hey, we're not trying to die slowly and then figure out where we're going. Let's just get, jump off the Titanic before it sinks. And man, is that a breath of, breath of fresh air. Mike Bartz, yeah. one of our big listeners with a super amen preach. Let's go Knowles to the Big Ten. SEC and ACC can kiss my ass. Absolutely, man. They ran a you know a 10-hour promotional during the conference championship day. The SEC championship is all about how great the SEC is. The ACC championship, all about how great the SEC is. You know, I watched y'all's rant. Y'all covered all the points. I mean, it's just insanity. You've got a small ACC guy who's the leader of the college football playoff. His brother's the VP of production or, you know, programming <laughs> at ESPN. It's just a complete joke. And they act like there's no conflict of interest. Like we're caught, you know, conspiracy theorists. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Well, well and, I mean, I mean I, yeah. go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. No, go oh, ahead. no, you go ahead. 
uh, it's just like the whatever you call them. I, I don't even know the the chief, the president, the commissioner of the college football co- playoff committee is a fucking ACC AD. <laughs> like, what are we doing? It's just it's just mind blowing that it happened. I I I was of the opinion. I, I do think with, without Jordan Travis, I think Florida State would have lost the semifinals. But I'm of the opinion that they deserve the right to get their ass kicked in the playoffs. Then, if mm-hmm. that's going to happen, they do. You lose a game, you have nothing to say. Shut the fuck up, Nick Saban. Like, sit there as a one-loss SEC champ, and if you don't get in, shouldn't have lost to Texas at home by double digits. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, and that, that should have been the argument the whole time, and that's where, you know, people, like Florida State fans especially, just lose their heads. It's like, there's there's a difference here. You know, the SEC guy gets on there, and says, you know, there's something different about these top five teams. One team stands out, and it's like, no, two teams stand out. They have a loss. They lost on the field, but <laughs> Texas had that win. They were going to put them in. Um, so, yeah, it, it, you hit the nail on the head. They're going to a power two. I thought it was going to be 2024, 2025. It got here a year earlier. You know, they did it one year earlier, and it's just uh, just a total spit, just a spit in the face, man. But what, yeah. we cut you off earlier, Jim. What were you about to say? Oh, I was just going to say, I think it's funny just with the ESPN guys um, calling Florida State fans lunatic fringe, which there are some, sure, every fan base has some. And then they proceed to go on ranting novels on Twitter to people with 70 followers in all caps and exclamation points. And then Paul Feinbaum whining about his millionaire Christmas party where this woman, you know, was mean to him because he was on Morning Joe on MSNBC and she was upset. Um, with his opinions for stealing children's dreams. And I guess I just get a little consolation knowing that poor Paul Feinbaum at his millionaire party is being stalked by deranged MSNBC women. I mean, I just think that's funny. Keep it up. Keep the pressure on. That's all I can say. I think that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah, and he's like, she stopped me. And I mean, I've only talked to her twice. She doesn't know anything about football. And I'm just like, okay, but you're on national TV now, bad-mouthing your neighbor for saying something to you. So I feel for your wife. And and can we just be clear that Paul Feinbaum doesn't know a fucking thing about (laughs) football. Like I promise you his neighbor is as knowledgeable (laughs) about the game. Now, Paul knows more people because of his job, but if they both sat and watched a game, they could tell you the same amount of actual information. It's so funny. I just was just laughing about it because they're just whining. And what did you think was going to happen? Like when you put stuff out on Twitter and then you're like, oh my God, people are mean to me. Like, yeah. Kirk has Welcome fucked around life. and he has fucked around and found out. And it's like Kirk, <laughs> like he keeps coming back for more. It's like he's just completely it's hard, it's hard to explain. Like somebody who's a princess or something and just completely removed from like everyday people. And he's just appalled. He's he can't believe it. And so he keeps on going with these crazy responses and he thinks people are gonna stop. And the idea of thinking that, oh, well, I can get a dog, like whose PR like idea was that? <laughs> Let's go ahead and get a puppy for my um like my privileged ass gets to bring my stinking dog, you know, to all these VIP rooms at 99% of America <laughs> that will never see. Even some coaches and D1 coaches will never have the privilege to be some of the boxes and shit that he does. But he thinks that puppy is going to get him support. And the memes that we've seen off of that thing are just priceless. Yeah, I priceless. thought it was funny that Florida State fans caused him to get a second support dog. <laughs> Unreal. But – um. <laughs> The transfer portal is also a big, big deal. Um, uh, I wasn't trying to cut you off. Did you add something? Or is oh, no, I was actually, uh, I was going to ask him actually about that too, because I really thought Cam Ward would be a good fit for you guys. I was a little surprised that that didn't. Um... Yeah. Ohio state's not, they, they're, they're very like uh selective in the portal and not, I'm not yeah. saying, player, I'm not saying caliber of player even. I mean, they, they turned down the opportunity to recruit Elias Ricks two years ago yeah. and you're like, looking like what this is one of the best corners in the country like what are, what are we doing it's like no we like where we're at with our room the chemistry the culture and i think i think ryan day really feels very confident in in what he has in devin brown at quarterback and i'm of i, I on my show i was of the opinion every every time we talked about it that you don't have to be like oregon state or washington with michael Penix. like you don't have to bring someone in like Florida State did with Jordan Travis or LSU right. with Jaden Daniels. Like, you don't have to bring in the alpha that is, like, definitely the starter. You can do what Alabama and Ole Miss did. I mean, Ole Miss went and got Spencer Sanders. Alabama went and got Tyler Buckner from Notre Dame. 
And it wasn't to come be the guy. It was like, okay, maybe you'll be the guy. Like if you go win the job, but if not, you're going to motivate the shit out of this room. And that's why I, I thought they should have gotten Cam Ward or really anyone <laughs> um, just to shake shit up. Uh, but I, I think Ohio State's really content with where their quarterback room is at. And you were high on him before the season. I mean, you you really – like you pretty much had him pegged to be the starter until, you know, the end of fall camp there. So I, I trust that 100%. Um, did Malik Murphy choose somebody else? I know you had a – you were thinking that he might be a good pickup for you guys. Um, yeah, I thought he'd be a great pickup for the same reason. I don't know that Malik Murphy's better than Devin Brown or would even start at Ohio State. But I thought he'd be he, – I mean, he definitely has value – and you bring him in, and he might. He might be Cam Newton. We don't know. But he also might not be, and he might just shake the room up a little bit. But I, I don't think he's picked anywhere yet. I talked to random, actually, his, I don't know what you call him, his personal coach or whatever you call him, right? <laughs> um, listens to our show and and messaged me about it because before he went in the portal, he was like, hey, he's going to enter the portal on Monday or whatever day it was. And he was like, I know Ohio State reached out a couple weeks ago, or someone reached out because you're not allowed to reach out. Right. Mm -hmm. Somebody close out. to the program. Yeah. Someone close to the program reached out to somebody. And what these schools do is they hear, they hear about these kids or they really basically, if you're a backup and a highly, highly ranked kid coming out, they'll find out like, okay, it, it, we're just trying to plan here. Is he thinking about entering the portal? Is he going to go to the portal? Like if he does, we just want to have a plan in case he does kind of deal. And then, uh, they, but they haven't reached out since he actually en entered the portal. So clearly they're not going after him either. Yeah. I, I kind of heard some Georgia with him. Makes sense. Uh, with Malik. Yeah, it does. Especially, I don't, did that kid flip or not? That Rayola kid? Yeah. Um, well, he was at the, the basketball game anymore. or whatever. But Yeah. He, he's going <laughs> My, to. <laughs> yeah, that, that thing is gone. This is going to be, I think, uh, what, his fifth school, like three high schools and three colleges. Four high, four four high, high schools? schools? Three colleges. Four high schools, three colleges. Wild. My word. Like he's trying to beat that uh, JT Daniels <laughs> oh <laughs> record out there, but oh, uh, Spirit Addicts, Spirit Addicts says ESPN is the Kardashians of sports <laughs> media because they like the real talent and all publicity is good publicity. Yep, pretty much, and they got their two teams in. And the SEC is Ray J. <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> that that we got to at least get a because that yeah. was a great one for sure. Um, the two guys we're out. After I know you don't get too crazy into the portal and recruiting and stuff, but um, DJU, a name that's you know been around, and we just talked on Cameron Ward, and kind of the reason I'm glad you brought it up. You said that not necessarily the play on the field; that's only part of bringing a guy into Ohio State. And I think yeah. that's one amazing thing that Norvell has done since he's been in here. He's brought smaller high school classes, been extremely particular on the portal classes. They've got more and more obvious talent as it's moved forward. But he's only brought in guys that he thought could really stick, help the program, you know, the culture, all the soft factors. But he's really only brought in FSU guys. And that's kind of turning me away from Cam Ward a little bit more towards the DGAU, knowing where he's been and how he battled at Clemson. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'm sure the folks would – they've heard our opinion uh, ad nauseum. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're moving closer to DJU. We're wondering what you might think on it. I mean, I I'd take Cam Ward over DJU if I had if I just got the pick. Um, I, th I think either would be a good option. Um, I think DJU is a, a, obviously a better player than Dabo had, had in Clemson. Um, and I've talked at – at length about that while it was going on after it happened. I mean, he had a bunch of fucking interns coaching, coaching on offense and it was just, it was a train wreck and he ended up getting rid of most of them. Now this year he got rid of the rest of them. Um, and DJ, you just got, I mean, just royally screwed. He got really every quarterback that's ever went to Clemson progressively got worse every year. Even Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence's best year was his freshman year. Every year after he was a little bit less productive. Um, and, when he got to the NFL, even Trent Dilfer, when he went th was going through the draft process, was like, this is crazy because Trevor Lawrence regressed at Clemson. It's like, yeah, because he has a fucking intern coaching him. Like, what did you think was going to happen? So I, I like DJU. I thought he had a good year at Oregon State. I think he'd be a good player, but I don't think he's going to give you like a Jordan Travis 2.0. I think Cam Ward could give you that. Like, he, he was fantastic last year at Washington State, and he has so much upside. He, he's so much more room to grow. He's obviously less experienced than DJU, which sometimes people tout as like that's a, a positive for DJ Uyunglele. I don't. I look at it as this kid hasn't even – I mean, he just 
had his first year in the fire. Like, imagine how much better he's going to be in year two and moving forward. So I would take Cam Ward over DJU. I mean, Stan, not even not even close, but I think both are good players. So I don't if if Florida State gets DJU, I don't think it's like, a, oh, shit, we 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 fucked this whole thing up. I just think Cam Ward would be a better option if they get, I don't know, their sec, second place pick in DJU. I think they'll be fine, but I would I would rather have Cam Ward personally. Well, I mean, I'm on my DJU because um, I'm very petty, and <laughs> I think beating Davo with DJ would be absolutely hilarious. Um, so I'm really there, but also uh, Cam Ward for me because I want to stick it to Miami. So I'm really, yeah, I'm kind of torn on this, and it's because I'm a very petty, bitter person. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you would you wouldn't want to have DJU and beat Clemson and then lose to Cam Ward at Miami. I know that much. And that's true. So that's where it's um, like. Although, as long as Mario's the coach, I'm not worried about what quarterback he gets. If I'm gonna be honest, I, I'm not. Killed- in two birds with one stone. Yeah. And I'm gonna let you run on run on with this, Jen, because you nailed it. Like yeah, both like, of y'all I nailed mean, it. Zach nailed it because yeah, you may want to take Cam just because if you get DJU, Cam goes to Miami. And yes, kind of like you talked about with the other quarterback coach over there in Carolina, the Hillbilly. Uh Jen, what's your opinion on Cristobal and uh his quarterback well, I think, acumen? I, well, I th- <laughs> there isn't one. There isn't one. And I mean, look, poor Tyler Van Dyke had to be run off to Wisconsin, and I have a feeling he's going to be successful there. I mean, you just watch. Just watch. When Mario's not ruining his um, <laughs> his quarterback career and, you know, can take knees and all this good stuff, the kid is probably going to be successful. So and Miami could screw around and win a couple games that they're not supposed to, but, again, as long as Mario's the coach, they could have Tom Brady back there as far as I'm concerned, and, and I'm – Okay, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Well, you, you know the thing you, you really got to look at it, right? Like you think about Nick Saban, you think about Kirby Smart, you think about Urban Meyer, Ryan Day. Like every coach has their their specialty, right? Their 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 specialization. Like Urban's was receiver play, Ryan's is quarterback play, Saban is DB play, Kirby's a defensive guy. Like Mario Cristobal is an offensive line coach. Mm-hmm. He has he has no business and doesn't have anything to do with quarterback development. And if he did that, that therein lies the problem. It's all about who he brings in to coach mm-hmm. his quarterbacks. And Shannon Dawson, I think is a good coach, but yeah. he's never struck me as some offensive guru quarterback developer. And his first hire, uh, Josh Gaddis, I think I, I mean, I think I almost killed the man just by talking about him. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, he's one of the, one of the dumbest fucking coaches I've ever seen in my life. We were life. in total agreement on that. If you want to, you know, re run over that. Yeah. As Florida state fans, we were <laughs> laughing all year at that hire. Freaking oh hilarious. My God. It was and amazing. I- and I mean, we, you know, we went against him at, at Michigan and I mean, it's just, it, it he needs a quarterback coach. Like that's he what does. he needs. Yeah. And I don't know why the fuck it's so hard for him, but hiring well, Josh. And I Harris, also, I, he puts his hands all over the offense too, and he has no business doing it. So he yeah. like will bring back what his offensive coordinators are calling, and it's it's kind of well known that he does it, but it's just it's I, I don't understand it. I just don't get it. I don't yeah. get it because he recruits so well in the trenches and could do so well if he would just get his nose, you know, a la Jimbo Fisher, out of the offense, and he won't yeah. do it. It's ego. Guys like that get an ego. I mean, they 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 feel like it's not going well, so they can fix it. I think that's what it is. Yeah, that's a poignant yeah. comment. Uh, you know, Spear Addicts, my guy Chris Razor brought up the fact that uh, Cam Ward, a lot of his turnovers were due to just having a complete terrible offensive, you know, line. And like this guy here says, DJU gets you ten and two possible <laughs> ACC ship. Ward gives you eleven and one chances to AC ship. ACC championship and a playoff win. You need another tight end for DJU so you can run power game. Um, that's my opinion. That's where I keep going back to. Like Cam Ward, if you can put the team together, if you can have the offensive line, everything you need, the defense to go with it, you can put Cam Ward in there and, and possibly go win it all. I feel like maybe DJU could put it together a bit more, maybe do a little bit more. Maybe if not Jordan Travis, do a li- little bit more of keeping the offense just on rhythm and not making the turnover and uh, winning you some games that way. So that's kind of where I stand on it. And whoever Mike Norvell picks, I'm fine with it. You know, I'm, that's kind of where I'm at too. Like I, he's, he's done so good, you know, on hitting yeah. on his evaluations his first four years. 
it's really hard to figure out anything he does. So it, it feels like a competition. He, like, that's how we feel about it. Like, both guys were there. Uh, Ward was there from Thursday all the way through Saturday. DJ got there Saturday, so they kind of crossed paths. I don't know if they threw against each other, had a workout together. But do you yeah. think that's possible? You, you think it's really them kind of comp- competing to who gets the spot? Or do you think, uh, you know, no. we, could, we could be left with our ass uh, – high and dry with neither one especially really both of them but the the transfer portal stuff nowadays and and this is a lot of the reason why ohio state didn't get involved with any of these quarterbacks is because it's it's a market right it's it's like hey here's what i'm looking for x amount of dollars like guarantee this because these kids aren't fucking around they're like no no no. i have a I i was a starting quarterback at washington state like i left so i better be the starter and i better make a shitload of money that's why i left and so it's honestly less about evaluation and picking your guy as it is about like getting into sales and getting into business deals. Like, all right, Cam Ward wants a million dollars. We got to be able to come up with a million dollars. If we don't, Miami will. That crazy fuck Ruiz will, will, will print <laughs> more fake money. He'll tank his company a little more and pay the guy a million dollars. Like, so I don't think I don't think it's the day and age where you're like trying to decide between the two. You're trying to figure out which which business you can acquire, right? Which 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 business can I go in and buy? And and if you can buy the better one, it might might cost you more, but you, you just got to get the business deal done. Um, and and as far as evaluation, they can't they can't have them throw or anything, but they have plenty of tape out there. I mean, they don't need to yeah. watch them throw live. Absolutely. Yeah, I. I, I'm I'm kind of more. I think that they have a better shot with uh, DJ because I have a feeling that um, uh, I don't know. I wonder if Cam might start talking. I mean, I know he said he wasn't going to go on any other visits, but then he said something about Zoom calls. So I mean, you could see he's just not ready to make a decision, and I wouldn't want to force him to. However, they relay that uh, financial number. I think yeah. is about all you need for the visit. Pretty much what Zach was saying, right. but yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's really it. Sorry. Mike Bartz had a question earlier, and me and Zach kind of talked about it before you jumped on, Jen. And he was asking me if we went to the Big Ten, what would happen with Miami and Florida State? Uh, I don't know what the hell they'd have to do. Uh, we can talk about the different ways they could work it in. I think the best thing to do would just be bookend it, is what we talked about earlier. Make it Miami the first game of the year, Florida at the end. And you just do away with those LSU and those other out-of-conference matchups. And Dartwick down here thinks that – Miami and FSU are heading on a collision course. Miami's going to be back to top 10 every year. We hope so, buddy. I mean, that's the idea, but uh, 30 I don't years have, and counting, dude. 30 I don't, years and counting. Yeah, I don't think every Mario's the guy. <laughs> every year. Yeah, like every, every year. Oh, well, my God. Relentless. We make fun of him. We said yesterday, um, Miami's favorite words are next year. Next year. Oh. Wait, next year. It's every year. Every year. Make and then a t shirt. And then in the offseason, they've arrived. <laughs> it, we're here now. You know, we had Miami fans all over the place last year during the summer. Best coaching staff in the state. Best quarterback room in the state. I swear it is amazing. And you bookmark them and you and then you go back and look and you're and here they are again. It's the same ones. Wait till next year. We're getting this guy. We're getting everybody. We're getting everybody. And I'm like, guys, y'all do this. I mean, I might believe you. And it could happen. It could happen. But right now you're the boy who cried wolf. And frankly, I'm tired of coming out, getting my gun and coming to see where the wolves are if you need to be saved because you don't. And you're sitting there and you're drinking a beer and you're like, oh, wait till next year. Come back next year. No, I'm not coming back. It's every year. It's every year. And I had they were. Oh, my God. They were at my neck all season when when Josh Gaddis got hired. And then when he got <laughs> when he got fired, they all came back. Yo, coach, you were right, man. We, you know, <laughs> we just thought. I'm like, no, y'all are just ignorant as fuck. Like, it is what it is. It's fine. We had guys I'm- on the fan base literally have to go out and do PSAs a week before the Florida State game, saying, "I am not paying back the bets. <laughs> all the multiple they, they bets that I made bets. all year, like, yeah. <laughs> unreal stuff." Um, Florida now, like. <sighs> Mm. what's i know you were down there that's like a pretty uh huge part of your career you've got a two-part series on your channel um talking about the netflix series that came out swamp kings i don't know maybe we could tease a part three i know jen's been excited to talk about uh the florida aspect of all that and uh with napier uh we call him billy taggart uh willie napier whatever you want to call it Uh, (laughs) seems like he might be out the door faster than crystal ball yeah i mean he's fucked i mean it's and i like billy napier (laughs) 
um, I don't know if you'd call him a friend, but him and I have talked several times back when he was at Alabama. We, we we played against him. He was a receiver coach at Alabama when I was a receiver coach at Ohio State in 2014 when we played. And then he went, ever, went to whatever Louisiana directional school that he went to, and him and I talked when he first got the job. Um, and, I, you know, I'm a Florida alum. I spent five yep. years there. I have a Gator diploma somewhere in my fucking basement. Some, I don't even know where it is. Um, <laughs> so I would love for Florida to be back. <laughs> like, that'd be awesome. But they are so fucked. Their schedule next year, they're they're ending yeah. the season 0 and 5. That's a guarantee. I mean, that's the lock of the year. I don't I don't know how he survives it. Um, he he got left a really, really shitty roster. Dan Mullen was probably one of the worst coaches in major power five football history with the job he did at Florida. Um, I know several people on staff, and I know several, I know countless stories about how pathetic of a job he did. And I, I think whoever came in after Dan Mullen was just going to be a sacrifice, the sacrificial lamb. It's like, yeah, you're not going to have success as good a job as you could do to help us with the next guy. We'd appreciate it because that's kind of where he's at. right now. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, man. I don't, I think, I think they don't fire him because you cannot fire him right now and bring in a new coach with that schedule. That no. that's just, you bring so, in the 80 first and then like, like just, be a total lame yeah, duck. Yeah, because the AD is going to go, I would think, too. I would think so. I or do you just the AD is tough it out? Jeremy Foley was uh, like the AD when I was it's there. It's Strickland, there right? Is it Strickland? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Strickland's been there. Or is it Sass? Oh, yes. He's the yeah. one that hired Dan at Mississippi State. Yeah, so he came that. over and brought Dan with him, and then yeah. then he hired uh Well, what's the weirdo ago? congressman that works there now um, who was, like, handing out water bottles at the basketball game? What does he mm. do there? Ben Sass, right? And, Ooh, I know that. Am name. I, I, can't, I can't think of who he is. Though. I need to look that up because now I, I can't remember what he does. Is he the new AD or because he's like over there handing out water bottles with like a like he was working in the event. I, I was so confused. He's, he's an academic American academic administrator, former politician who he's yeah. the president of the University of Florida. Oh, he's the president of the University. Oh, okay. Ah, there you well, go. El president. Yeah, he was like a. The congressman or something from Nebraska, which was a weird hire, but my whole take on it was that UF was kind of it was a 2021 situation because, like you said, I like Napier. I, I know he was hired at Florida State for like a Crystal. couple years. I think if you swap the situation, I think if you dropped Napier off in Miami and dropped Taggart off in Florida, you know, no, excuse me, Taggart, <laughs> if you put Crystal Ball in Florida and Napier at Miami, I think you know. It, it would have a complete opposite reaction. I think maybe Cristobal's already done it for it, but who knows? You never know. Those are hypotheticals. But, uh, but yeah, I think uh, but it's just crucial with that season coming up and that schedule. Uh, it just didn't work out. They didn't really get um, too much together. But they bring the quarterback back. You never know uh, what kind of magic could happen down there in Gainesville. But uh, well, it's, it's, it's never good when you're losing your star players, right? Trevor Etienne hits the transfer portal. It was great to get uh, whatever fuck is Graham Mertz back. I think this is all – they really have one egg in one basket, and that's DJ Langley. Mm -hmm. If he comes in and is a stud, they got a chance. If he's not, it is cooked for a long time. I, I don't think – do you think they actually try and play him next year? I don't think they can. I don't think no, they don't can think with they that should. offensive line. Yeah. I don't think, I, I don't think they should. It, he'll be ruined. I yeah, mean – They absolutely shouldn't, but – so that goes into Napier. In, like, it's like he's on the hot seat. What the hell? Like you've got this quarterback. Yeah. It's, a, it's a mess, like you said. I mean, they'd have to bring in maybe like five offensive linemen who are good out of the portal right now, just to even. I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's. I, I feel. I mean, I don't feel for them because you know those fans are kind of mean, but um, I mean, I do feel for <laughs> the players. Florida I feel they're so fucking nice. Uh, now, no, I mean Zach we're, we're is, awful, but like is a UF uh, alumni and coach at the school yeah. and everything. So <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I know. No, they're you, you can drop I, um, an elbow if you got to, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She can take it awful. as well as she dishes. Oh, yeah. She can take it as well as she can dish it out. For yeah, sure. I always get messages from people if I'm like on a show and I get all this backlash because I went on the show, uh, the roll up, and oh, um, yeah. man, I was getting backlash, backlash. <laughs> and uh, Silk texts me and he goes, "Hey, you okay?" or something like that. it was either Silk or Kenny, and they were like, "Hey, just making sure everything is okay." I was like, "Yeah, I mean, I, this is fun. I like it. I don't <laughs> right. mind it at all." Fucking Twitter. So no, no, no. I just it's not that I I don't feel bad really for um I guess maybe some of the fans, some of the fans are nice. They're not as bad as Miami fans. I will give them that. No. But no. um because that's just a whole another level of delusion. But 
No, we work those with gators and stuff. We work with them during the week. Yeah. We bust each other's balls. Those Miami yeah. people like exist in chat rooms only. It's pretty wild. But... Spaces. It's all spaces. Yeah. Oh, oh God, my. I love them. They're just in fucking like, spaces. 24 oh hours a day. It's like anything you've ever <laughs> seen. Like how? Like you... we schedule them. Our people have them, you know, you know, I, I don't this do day, this space. I don't do spaces, but Chris, my co-host does it all. Like, and he does them less now. He used to do them all. He used to be in them all the time. And in Miami, right, when that whole Josh Gaddis thing was going on, I would pop into spaces just to fucking dunk on all of them. It was, <laughs> and, and it's the only time I've been in spaces is I'd see like Gmo or some of these like Miami people that watch our show, and they pop up on my Twitter. I'm like, hold on, let me go, let me go dunk on these Miami fans real quick. And click the button, and they'd be quick to make me a speaker. <laughs> Him and uh, I, I was drawing a blank. What's the guy, the wide receiver coach or something? Ed. Uh... Ooh, I don't know who's there. Now. Reed. It was a, no. It was this was a guy that was on the Ohio State staff, or I think, or something that they forced oh, into a wide receiver coach position. Yes, yes. Yeah. Man, uh, you've had me in stitches on some of those Edward <laughs> uh, stories and stuff, man. But yeah, uh, yeah, menace to sports. If your guys aren't subscribed, I don't know what the hell y'all are doing. Get over there. But what's this new show you're uh, you're working on? So it's really cool. It's going to be really, I mean, it's probably not great for, for your fan base, but it's going to be, it's called OVE Ohio versus everyone. And, and I'm not, I mean, I'll be a guest on it, but it's uh, probably the top, not probably the top radio sports radio personality in Columbus um, is going to come over and, and do a show on our station. And he's got some big time kind of older, uh, really huge. I mean, Kent Merker was played baseball at Ohio state, played in the major leagues for 17 years, played for the Braves back when they were the Braves, like, you know, with fucking John Smoltz and Chipper Jones and he's big time. Uh, so they're going to do this show. He has a former Buckeye, Matt Finkus, who's going to do it with him. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be really cool. Kind of just about the sports world in the state of Ohio, the Browns, the Bengals, the Indians, the Reds, the Buckeyes, you know, just all Ohio teams, um, definitely going to be more of a regional show, but it's going to it's going to be really really fun. Heck yeah, man! Hey, we looking to be part of that conversation. We in the Big Ten, like we're talking about, right. uh, like our sources are telling us, and the sources out there in the streets saying February. So hopefully, uh, we we get to come to Ohio a couple times a year and play in some big games. But uh, Jeremiah Smith is a big game, uh, and again, mm -hmm. you know, Zach isn't he's not a crazy recruiting person. We aren't either. I'm um, kind of in the middle. Like we followed a ton, but there's only so much. Uh, Travis Hunter pretty much broke me from getting any <laughs> kind of emotionally involved or like watching every other move. I read the tea leaves. I make my predictions and I get out of it. I predict Jeremiah Smith to Florida State. He's visited 15 times, you know, all the different soft factors. But the kind of chord throughout the thing would be tumultuousness with Brian Harson or Hartline, and that just it didn't happen. Um, that thing has looked kind of solid. It's looking more and more like he's going to stick. And if he moves or something, maybe it would be after a bowl game to where you know it, it kind of locks in there. So I I don't know. I'm locking in. I'm staying on my prediction. Um, I'm different. But, but what do you, what do you think, Jen? You know what I think. I, I've said it. I I mean I know that there are people I trust and and that are way smarter than me on recruiting and I and I'm just a girl on the internet but I, I've always said I thought he sticks with Ohio State um be, well because of that relationship with Brian Hartline he loves him and unless Brian Hartline left then I might have started being like mm, maybe you know maybe but I as long as he's there I don't um that's just me I'm not other Florida State fans, please don't get mad at me. I get it. I get it. I know you don't like it, but that's just my thoughts. Well, you know, this is the first time Florida State's had receivers that are worth a shit, really. Um, and it's fair. That, that's, it's fair. That's a big. That's a big. I mean, you, I'm talking nationally relevant, right? No, like, it's fair. They've had it's some fair. solid players, but but Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson, like that, what they did this year, even Jaheim Bell at tight end, like it made it attractive to a kid mm -hmm. like like Jeremiah Smith before this year. If I was at Ohio State, Florida State would never sniff a receiver I was trying to recruit ever. Yep. It would just never happen. Now, it's close to home. I know what the cult is like in the state of Florida. Just in, I mean, I also live in Columbus. I know what this shit feels like right mm -hmm. now in December 17th when it's 21 degrees. Um, but I, I, I think the kids really locked into Brian Hartline. And, and I've always said I recruited South Florida for, I don't know, six years. And when you're at Ohio State recruiting South Florida, there's certain kids like, uh, what's the name, Akeem Dent, the kid that went to Florida State. I tried to talk to the kid. Florida State was fucking awful that year. And really, the, it was the Willie Taggart era. 17 or 18, yeah. something I mean, like that. Just 19. Awful. And I just tried to talk to the kid, and he wouldn't talk to me. 
They're yeah. like, yeah, he really wants to go to Florida State. And I'm like, fucking why? Like, <laughs> for what reason? Like, to I'm do saying, dance moves at practice. I don't know. Uh, whatever it is. So the turnover not, bag. Like, the, the, there's kids in Florida that, man, they just grew up and a certain team is their mm -hmm. team. And you're not, you're not going to. You're not going to beat that no matter what. You can win a national championship. That team could go 0 12. They just love Florida State and it doesn't make sense, but it's the way it is. And then there's some kids that really look at it from a business sense of, I want to go somewhere that I'm going to get maximized, play in the NFL. Not that that couldn't happen at Florida State, but this kid bought all the way in to the Brian Hartline experience, right? Because of the success he's had in the last five years with Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, like the multiple first rounders. The kid's like, I want to be next up. Like, I want to be that next one. I don't give a fuck if I got to go to Canada. Like, that's where I, that's what I want to do. And so I think he's, I agree with Jen. I think he's really locked in on Ohio State. But you never say never, right? Brian Hartley uh, yeah, can leave tomorrow. Yeah, and and with those Florida kids, and and obviously we all are Florida people. We understand it. And I, um, I love them, and I'm not saying anything bad. But, you know, those recruitments can always go a little wonky. And they can always yeah. go a little sideways at the last minute, you know, so you never oh, yeah. know. But that's just, that's my two cents because there's, there's I just powerful, feel like, yeah. powerful forces in the world. And, yeah. and, and one is very powerful. And uh, yes. Florida State's full of them. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. Uh, there's this club called The Moon at Florida State that's like legendary uh, in Tallahassee. I don't know if you've ever heard any stories about that. But uh, yeah, very. that was one of the best like recruiting tools for years. <laughs> I, I, I haven't heard of it, but I do know I've, I've met one girl that went to Florida State and she changed my life. And uh, <laughs> and then and I used to tell kids, like, I don't know how when we were in Gainesville, I was like, how do we beat Florida State? Like they have FAMU, they have Florida State, they have a, a, a community college in Tallahassee, like literally just so many 18 to 22 year olds, hot ass women. Like how we're in Gainesville, like it's a, it's a far better school, harder to get into. I mean, I'm not saying that the that beautiful women can't be smart or vice versa but i would say the ratio of really smart and beautiful women is lower than any level of intelligence you know you can have dumb smart anything in between and florida and tallahassee has them all <laughs> it's like i don't know how we get an 18 year old to come here having that fam you homecoming and everything right there oh, across the train God. tracks is just <laughs> unreal you want to talk about keon coleman uh and it was pretty funny i wanted to bring that up because it was kind of like what the fuck was up with Heartline liking the, the tweets shitting on Keon Coleman? I guess it was just <laughs> uh, like it, it didn't know he wasn't on his burner or what. I know it was around ward season uh, um, or whatever. But, yeah, if you look at Keon Coleman's a, Instagram page. Of night. If you, yeah. you look at the time of night that was going on, he could have been a little in the sauce. I mean, no well, big deal. You know, Everybody's done it. No big deal. Yeah, you know, I, everyone's done it. I mean, some, oh, yeah. some more publicly than others. I mean, my man flipped an <laughs> I mean, ATV and almost fucking died. Like. <laughs> Good Lord. Heart, heartline parties a little bit. <laughs> don't we all? Don't we all? I just I'm glad that uh the, the social media and everything in my high school days wasn't to the level it is now because I would have some embarrassing, embarrassing oh my shit God. out there. there I don't think no I have a job. About it. <laughs> but uh Charles Newcomb Jr. comes in. Anything on Marvin Jones Jr. to Florida State. Here's one we're absolutely confident about. Okay. Uh they're visiting <laughs> oh, for the wow. weekend. You know, he got in the portal, jumped over. Uh, there's all kind of fun pictures of Marvin Jones Sr. Uh, messing around, hanging out with different coaches and stuff around the Moore Center on Twitter. And, of course, Marvin Jones uh, hanging out on campus with, uh, you know, Jared Burks and those guys. So I 100% believe he ends up at Florida State and maybe a couple other Georgia players. You know, some people are making light of it. Some people are acting like the sky are fall sky's falling. And it's one of these things that drives me absolutely nuts. We just went on a crazy brand about it the other day because it gets me so pissed off. Florida State has 15 three stars hitting the portal, you know, the bottom third of the roster, third and fourth string guys who are third and fourth year players you're bringing in 30 high school guys georgia's in the same position except for they don't fuck with the portal they don't have these added numbers it's just the high school guys they bring in every year outside of a quarterback here you know one two players here well they have like 10 15 guys go and it's not the normal you know it's like 10 five stars and three or four four stars uh what do you think you think those are guys that didn't fit you think not making the playoffs it's like all right well we came here like guaranteed playoffs bitch we're out like you think they have anything to worry about or George is going to be right back to just the mega death next year like they normally are? I mean, you know, you never know. I mean, I, I thought this year they would be down. Um, I 
I guess I was right that they got beat, but I thought they'd get beat in the regular season. Um, I, I think Kirby's done such a good job recruiting, and and he mm-hmm. does such a good job with development that there you're at a high profile place like like uh, Georgia that has had the success they've had. These kids are trying to capitalize. And so they feel like they're in the NFL. They feel like they are the show, the superstars of college football. And so some of them get distracted or maybe it's smart. I don't know. They want a paycheck, a bigger paycheck than they get. And, and we saw Alabama lost an offensive lineman to Miami last year, a starting offensive lineman. It's like, that should never fucking happen. Miami didn't even make a bowl game. Bama is a playoff team every year. This kid's starting you seen what, what happened had. to that motherfucker, boy. Well, he, you know, a high, a high school recruit got more money than him to come there. And he's like, what the fuck is this? I start. And so, you know, we've just, we've infiltrated college football with money. And so you're going to have a bunch of these, this shit happen where kids like Kyle McCord, who's the starting quarterback at Ohio State and presumably going to be next year is going to transfer to Syracuse. Now, he didn't want game. no fucking competition, huh? He said, I'm done. No, the, the, <laughs> what the, was up with that? Competitive schools didn't want him. <laughs> okay, well, I yeah. saw, I read something, maybe it was just bullshit, but, like, I forget the school before Syracuse, like, like there was just, he found out that there was going to be some other quarterback, even if it was going to be a question. He oh, was like, nope, I'll, I'll, nope, right. When they when they started, uh, you know, Dylan really, Riola. when they got Riola in town, he was like, nope, I'll go to Syracuse. Like, yeah. Wow, like it's his dad. It's his dad more than him, but yeah, it's just. I had read like, that too. It's basically just like we want to guarantee he's going to be a starter, and Matt Rule wasn't going to do that. I promise you, Fran Brown's not doing that at Syracuse. But I think that the family, the dad, is comfortable that like no one at Syracuse is going to be better than Kyle. Right? Like, yeah, bub. Why don't you go to fucking Akron? I bet he's the best one at Akron too. Like, I was the- really hoping he would go to Miami. I really oh, was. Me too. God. <laughs> That just that would have just made my year, honestly. There's still I mean, time. Let Cam Ward pick Florida State. Mario Scramble, late offer to Kyle McCord, <laughs> boom. Cause, yeah, because I think Will Howard's going to go to USC because mm-hmm. Mario let him leave again. And again, I just – when you have those quarterbacks on – I mean, especially with uh, portal kids, portal quarterback kids, you cannot let them leave to go visit another school. If that's what's going on, usually – they are still looking for more. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, you got to get them to shut it down at least or not take any other visits or however that's going to go. So I, I just don't know. I I think that Will Howard kid would have committed to Miami that weekend if they would have let him. Oh, probably. Probably, but you, you get a tough spot, right, where you're saying, all right, this we like this kid a lot. Like, we'd love to have him, but we like Cam Ward better. So we can't. I, I, and I kid. get it. I mean, it's it's a game you got to play. They honestly fucked up the visit schedule. They should have brought the, Will Howard in a little, uh, you know, two weeks later to see if they could yeah. they could get Cam Ward to lock in. And if not, then you go with Will Howard. It was weird they brought him in at the exact. I mean, I know like uh, Cam and DJ had a little bit of an overlap, not really, because I think Cam came in the night, or DJ came in the night Cam was leaving. So it's not like they were on the. But Will Howard and Cam were on the campus at the same time. The yeah, whole like, time. Like touring the academic facility yeah. together. <laughs> like yeah. it's, that is a really strange situation to me. I mean, again, to me, and it makes me feel a little bad for Will Howard. It makes me feel, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. For him. He's going to USC instead of Miami. He that's did. true. I mean, yeah. And, and, I mean, that is true. And did you see his tweets, like talking about the campus or like the stadium and stuff? It was so funny. I was oh. just. What a oh, beautiful yeah. on-campus state. Like, it was just, it was amazing. And I was like, <laughs> when the head coach of the ball club can't get the keys to the rental to bring the recruit in there, yeah, that's trouble for you know, even Biggie if you do have joking. all the money. Oh, my gosh. Biggie, yeah. that was a troll. He was kidding. He was well, kidding. I don't. Well, well, everybody knows now, but yes, I know. But <laughs> it's it's pretty fucking hilarious. But I um, wish I could tweet like that guy, though. His tweets are so funny. Yeah, They're they so are, funny. Man. But um, but yeah, the portal. That's and that was what I mean. It's so mad with these Florida State fans who's like, oh, why don't we have a bunch of portal commits? It's like, well, you have two arguably the top two quarterbacks in all the portal for the first week. Like they're locking the quarterback down, and that's you know back not to jump back on Florida, but that's kind of Napier's deal. He didn't jump in. The portal is the opposite of high school. You don't want that last visit. You want that first visit, and yeah. if you can lock that some bitch in and let him not leave. That's it. That's definitely. Uh, what you want to do. There's no doubt about it. Um, and uh, 
I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I wanted to um, I wanted to ask you because your Swamp King stuff was amazing. Um, let me ask, what is the what is the true story with um, Aaron? The first night with the shooting in the face, like at the club when he was suspended for like the half of the what was it? The University of Texas Arlington, maybe was that who they were playing uh, that, that game, or was that the Aztecs? I can't remember who it was. I, I don't I don't so I don't remember Aaron being in trouble when I was there with with guns. I thought it happened after uh, he was done. I would have to look it up, but um, I, the story that I know is this: uh, this a kid disrespected him at the club. They ended up getting into it. They when they were leaving, someone shot into the car and it hit the okay. kid in the face. And then fast forward to they couldn't figure out who it was. And then the 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 kid he murdered execution style up in the northeast. He murdered him because that kid was either with him or knew about it, and he was telling people about it in 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 the city and up up in New England. And so Aaron just executed him, I guess. <laughs> How did you like? I want to know, like, just from someone because you were around him, right? I mean, you you were around him and, and knew oh, yeah. him. He was, he was at my house for Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, like this is that had to be such a. I I'll never forget when it happened. Like I'm, I was actually at work in Connecticut, uh, Danbury, Connecticut, like watching, and I couldn't stop. I'm supposed to be working, but it's like all over the news. How was that for you? Like, was that just? Did you ever expect that out of him? No. Not at all. I mean, he he was one of those kids. We we always used to say he was like Eddie Haskell. Like he was when the <laughs> coach's wives came around, he was like the nicest, most polite, uh -huh. well spoken. Like, yes, ma'am, how are you? Oh, hello, Mrs. Meyer. It's so great to see you. And you're looking at him like, shut the fuck up. You are not. <laughs> but then on the other side, like, I just thought he was a sexual deviant. Like, because this man. He he was wild. Like I would go to I, I would you know as a GA he would he would talk to GAs differently than Urban Meyer. Like mm -hmm. I would walk to practice and he make he'd say uncomfortable shit. Like hey yo coach you wearing underwear? I'd be like what? He'd be like yo your shit is swanging right now. What like, the what fuck? the fuck? Like bro don't talk to me like that. And he he had a he used to when we would go on road games like Urban would check check the hotel like for bed check he'd check every kid and like you know just kind of a psych psychological thing. And Aaron would hear him coming down the, the the hallway. And before he got in there, Aaron had one of those pocket pussy, like masturbator things. And he would take it and throw it and stick it on the ceiling above the door. So when Urban walked in, he had like a masturbating thing hanging above his head. Like, so he was like, you knew he was like a freak, <laughs> but oh my goodness, I never thought he would kill people. Like he, he, he didn't seem like a bad person. He, you just knew. He's a little twisted. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to start rumors. I think uh, some, I guess in some of the documentary, it was, he maybe a closet. Were they saying he was closeted a little? Yeah. I mean, they said, they said, they said he was gay. Um, okay. That would not surprise me at all. Okay. Um, but I don't, which I would don't make sense that. with the swing in comment. I'm, yeah, I'm just I mean, saying I. Yeah. When you're talking about a coach's dick. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that I, in any scenario, I would be like, oh, that guy's got a big dick right there. Unless yeah. I have some interest. I don't know, though. Maybe, maybe people do that. I just, um, I, I guess I wonder, have you ever talked to Coach Meyer after all that happened? Like, did he say anything about it? Did he notice anything? No, I mean, it was, uh, we never really talked about it. And, I, you know, I was, I was there with Aaron and Urban at Florida. And then I was at Ohio State when everything happened with Urban. Uh -huh. um, and it was just kind of like, just mind blown like what the wow like yeah shocked and and i know people people act like oh urban meyer harbored a murderer like no he didn't like yeah, one I, uh... it was as shocking to urban meyer as it was to anyone else in the sports world as it was to me when it all came out i'm like no way this now what he was i mean it's a long story but right his his mom really fucked him up because he had a, he had a good family he had a great dad great family great parents brother brother goes to yukon like just a Connecticut family. That's a really good family. His dad went in for, I think like a, to get his like pancreas removed or something like appendix removed and ended up getting an infection and dying in the hospital, like freak, freak accident, random. And, I, and that fucked Aaron up. And then to double down on that, his mom started dating this drug dealer in town. And so it went from like, oh, man. 
white picket fence family to like mom's fucking the drug dealer and all this crazy shit. And he just, he went off the radar. Then he came down to Gainesville and he was around some real people from some real situations. And he became, you know, like he started listening to music and thinking he was that music type of kid where he just was influenced by culture. And I think he became a, a, a killer because he heard shit and was trying to act like he was something he wasn't. Although obviously inevitably he ended up becoming it, but that's just, that wasn't, it wasn't like a kid that was just like raised by the streets and lived like that. It was like, he started this persona and it led to the tragedy that we all watched play out. I, that's just so wild to me. And there were so many um, other things about him and, and you almost, and again, I mean, of course I feel sorry for the, the man he killed or, um, and then there was like a drive by too. I mean, I'm not trying to, but he just seemed like such a uh, tortured person who was either trying to hide who he really was or was yeah. trying to be more than who he really was. I could never figure that out. So yeah. that's some interesting insight on him. I always <laughs> wondered if there were signs of it. And I, I didn't think there were because I had heard from people that there really weren't, that he was actually kind of a nice um quiet kid but i have heard he was a little bit of a, a schmoozer right he was yeah, oh yeah a kiss up a little yeah. bit of a kiss up yeah he was i mean he was he, that's exactly what he was and yeah i think i think those that knew him knew that that was kind of phony but nobody thought he was going to do what he did <laughs> no yeah. one i i've heard from somebody who knew him and, and i will say this this is the word they described him as smarmy smarmy was very nice but you knew he was like a little fake and and yeah. kind of yeah yeah for sure and who was his roommate um well that's a good question uh i know tebow was like the the one roommate that got passed around for every kid that was going through problems like like literally i think all of Tebow's was... roommates at this point are in prison or dead and killed people <laughs> um, i mean uh what the fuck is his name tony joiner was the one who was uh had a little bit of a drinking problem in college like got his car repoed or, or impounded and then broke into the impound and, and stole his car from the impound and had a bunch of issues and then so he, they made him move in with tebow like tebow jesus will fix him <laughs> and uh, so he moved in with them ended up getting through it the kid was a captain believe it or not and then aaron started going through shit and it's like give him to jesus he'll get him right <laughs> like, tebow was like he was like the staff whore. Like, oh, we got did a bad he, kid. Did he get paid for being the team chaplain or was that no, just God. a freebie? It was no, just a freebie. a freebie. That was a freebie. <laughs> but My I mean, then Tony Joyner, I think, killed his wife and is now in prison. And Aaron Hernandez killed two two people and then killed Ooh. himself. And it's like, I feel like Tebow's like the kiss of death. <laughs> Poor yeah, guy. Yeah, that's a pretty, uh, mean, pretty terrible uh, situation. Was, There's no doubt about it. So tell me, I need to know a little bit more. And this is a question only because a lot of people in Memphis, you know, um, a lot of people in Memphis have now become like Florida State fans. So when SWAT came, came out, it was just around here. So many people were watching it and I get the questions like I'm supposed to know. Right. Yeah. Um, but there was an interesting question that I got was about Chris Rainey, you know, mm -hmm. like that whole situation. Um, because in Swap Peas, they don't even talk about it. The only thing you hear about Chris Rainey is when they say, oh, he went over to the coach's house and they had like spaghetti and had dinner. But that was a big, that was a big deal at the time. Yeah. Um, was it as serious as the media made it out to be? No. no. I didn't I think mean, so. Okay. Like Chris Rainey is, well, I mean, I still talk to him. He's a, he's a great kid. Like he's mm -hmm. a kid that every single day has a smile on his face, like happy as shit. He's also like, he just talks too much. He says outlandish <laughs> shit that he doesn't really mean. He's kind of stupid about it. Like, but all, I mean, that's just his personality. And so he got into something with, with his girlfriend. They both were saying shit they shouldn't say. Right. And he said shit that he didn't mean and never would do. Like, it's time to die, bitch, or whatever. Like, just like, I don't know, just, it's hard to explain unless you know him. Like, if Chris Rainey texted me something like that, I would laugh and be like, shut the fuck up. Like, cause he just said <laughs> flippant shit. And so they made it a big deal. And it certainly, I mean, threatened to tell, tell a girl it's a time to die. Like that's really not a good thing, but they made it out to be like, this is some psychopath that was going to kill his girlfriend. <laughs> it's just so far from the truth. He, and he's a, he's a great kid. He's, he's a good, I mean, he's married now, has kids, great dad. Yeah. Like 
he's awesome. I have to admit, like at the time, I um, when it happened, I got some blowback from even Florida State fans because I was like, that just seems like he was fighting with his girl over a text. Right. And then right. she, and then she put it out there. I mean, I'm sorry, as a female, you know, we can say some crazy shit over text, and I, and I'm not gonna hide from it. Like I can get mad too. Like, what are we talking about? Now I haven't told anybody it's their turn to die, but yes. I will say I, I, I mean the way I act. I've probably gotten that text a couple times and I have never like, <laughs> I've never like released it or anything. Maybe I should, but like, no. And guys, I mean, we're, we're getting ready to um, move on and get the, the phone lines open here in a minute, but sorry not to cut you off, Jim. Oh no, you're fine. I was just saying like, I just, um, I, I didn't know if that was, that's the way I read it at the time. So I didn't know if right. I was being a little bit of a, a softy for him, but I do. I will say that the game day signs were fun with the time to die signs. Those oh, were yeah. fun. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, but, it's all fun until it's true, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the problem you deal with in any in any of these situations is it's like, come on, he didn't mean that. Well, until he did. And then it's like, oh, fuck, he really meant it. Like, we didn't yeah. think he meant it. <laughs> I'm, I mean, yeah, I guess it could have gotten worse because he could have actually done something, you know, a la Aaron Hernandez, but I just, um, it, that one, that case just fascinates me so much just because of his, his fiance who seems to, I don't know. I mean, she seems to still say he wasn't, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a really wild story and the Hulu documentary was great, but, um, the Swamp Kings thing that you did was really good because a lot of that stuff in Netflix didn't get covered yeah, and, well um, when you let Urban Meyer control what's on the show, you're not going to get the truth. <laughs> like, yeah, and oh god, Chris Leak, Chris Leak wasn't even like no given any credit in that. It's I mean, it's stick out to a, a trainer or something. It, like, like Florida, wow. it was like everything. It was like Florida wrote a puff piece and put it on. Like it was, you were such a disappointment. You're thinking you're going to get this shit y'all are talking about. And again, go check out Zach uh, Smith over at Minnesota sports. He's got a two part thing. We're trying to get him to it's do so a good. third one. Uh, but about the swamp King show, it's just <laughs> unreal. The puff piece that they put in place. <laughs> what was one of the craziest times ever? Yeah, it I was, just, but it was such a wild ride. I'm sure for you guys, I'm sure. I mean, you know what? Uh, it, and shame on Netflix. Cause that could have been, I mean, that could have been really well done and it didn't have to be a hit piece either. It could have just no. been truths and things that people didn't know about what was going on. Because honestly, it gets overstated how like yeah. this, it was some like renegade program, not to steal your show name, but like it was like just all <laughs> these convicts and criminals raping women and fucking killing people everywhere. And Urban didn't care as long as we beat Bama. Like it wasn't like that at all. People like to make it out to be that way. It's one of those things where you have success. It's like Georgia with all the speeding stuff now. It's like, oh, Georgia won back-to-back -back natties. Now they have this massive culture issue because they all drive fast. It's like, if yeah. they didn't win two natties, you wouldn't even know about it. <laughs> Look, Absolutely. I've always said um, Athens police and Tallahassee police have never been with the program. They aren't. They love uh, – Look, don't get me started on Willie Megs. I'm not going to get into that conversation again. But um, Athens police, I've, I've said it. Athens and Tallahassee, they're never with the program. They always pull over kids for, like, speeding. I mean, whatever. Come on. Just they stop. arrested Jameis Winston for getting free <laughs> oh draft picks from someone. They gave them to him. Speak yes. on it, man. It's like a joke. It's like, what are we and doing? And by the way, I'm so tired of that being the criticism. Publix crab legs are delicious, guys. They're delicious. And, and I be, wish to be clear, somebody I hate would Jameis. give them to me. I hate Jameis. Do you? I do. I think he's so funny. <laughs> He's such a fucking clown, but I thought that cr crab leg thing was ridiculous. Like, you know how many times an Ohio State player goes to Chipotle and they're like, oh shit, CJ Stroud, you don't have to pay. What? And he walks out and you arrest him for stealing a burrito? Like, what are we talking about? I I would give, if, if Publix would give me a bunch of free crab legs, I would be so happy. Um, <laughs> their drawn butter is, is delicious. I love their crab legs. They're awesome. And so if he wanted to go in there and then he left and went and got his Buffalo Wallings and then came back, it wasn't like, <laughs> I just, I never understood this. I never, under and then yes, they arrested him. It's so crazy. And um, there's so many times that Tallahassee, I mean, the Willie Meggs guy, he um, would always bring charges against Florida state players, even though there was like no evidence and then it would get thrown out. And then it was like, it's just, 
no, that that town is not protecting those football players. Never has, never will. Right. All righty. Well, um, look, <laughs> wild stuff, man. Wild stuff. But <laughs> Florida State getting left out. Uh, crazy shit. We've gone through all the main topics. We've had a lot of fun. It's kind of we're right here at fifty nine, fifty five. This is kind of when we start to open the floor up for questions. Turn on the phone line. So. Um, Given how much fun we have at Pat over the past hour, I don't know. I'm kind of scared. You guys feel free to text in your questions. We're gonna throw the number <laughs> up there. Um, but I'm gonna throw up the number up there and uh, you know, kind of back to the whole situation, you know, Georgia has stepped up. I don't know if you've seen that, but along with the Florida um what is the the Florida um agriculture anyway, somebody um a big uh person in the Florida government sends an uh, a letter to the college football playoff oh, demanding the explanation. Yeah, that's right. Ag Moody, um, Georgia steps up. Now they're sending letters talking about they need to explain the playoffs to six teams. I don't know about that. I don't think that'll ever happen. You've already started prep and all this stuff. I don't think it'll ever oh, be yeah, that. Oh, yeah, it's not going to happen. But what I'm with, hey, look, let Alabama or Texas, their one loss, you get Florida State, 14-0. If they can pull it off against Georgia, obviously they'll be underdogs. You're the only underdefeated Power 5 team in the nation. There's no reason the AP or, you know, the coaches poll can't vote us. Number one, we're already number three and one and number four and the other. Yeah. This ain't a US, UCF situation, right? We're not being that kind of dorks over here. I mean, this is – I mean, you're talking about a, a legit split national championship if that happens. Yeah, well, you definitely could. You definitely could have it. I mean, you, you especially you, you get Bama to beat Michigan, Texas to beat Washington. Florida State ends the year the only unbeaten and beats Georgia, who's, uh, uh, you know, obviously a well-respected Power 5 foe. Uh, you you definitely are going to have some some controversy, and I think I think there will be a lot of writers out there in the AP that are going to say, "No, this is bullshit." Like Florida State's the best team in the country. Yeah, I mean, no I doubt. agree with you. I, you know, I I'd love to see the game versus Georgia. I'd love to see. I I want to see who's playing first. That's where I, that's what I want to see. Um. Yeah. So, and I I've, I have heard that Georgia players are almost as um kind of despondent and and upset as florida i mean not, maybe not as upset but there was like a a game chat you know between a lot of them that where they were online playing games that got released on twitter or something i don't even know how true it was but you could tell they were just they were like let's all go let's not even score let's knee let's do this i mean right. <laughs> it's i guess they were just which obviously isn't going to happen but you kind of wonder what the mindset is for both teams because you can kind of you can understand how it would be maybe a little dejected, even though Georgia, I mean, all you had to do was not lose. All you had to do was not lose. You right, could not lose. Right. You could not lose and you'd be in it. Florida state is the one who didn't lose. And yeah, okay. And, and the real problem is, is people are going to point to this game and act like it, especially mm -hmm. Florida state loses, like it proves something. It's like, yeah. what do you mean? And I don't, I don't, I, I don't follow Florida State at heavily. I certainly don't as much now, now that they're not in the playoffs. But I can't imagine guys like Keon Coleman are playing in the game. And if they're not, it's like you didn't beat the Florida State team that people wanted in the playoffs. You beat yeah. a different Florida State team. Like it's, it's not the same. I've heard some of the defensive players, minus uh, Fabian Levitt. I don't know George if you saw that, but um, I've heard a lot of them are thinking about playing in it just to you know, maybe prove that point. If I were them, I, I probably wouldn't give them that same advice. I, I mean, I know as a fan, I'm going to get blasted for this, but you know, I, for me, the committee just told those kids their, their games didn't matter. Their, their season didn't matter. I, I don't see how you put on that uniform and say I could get hurt before I go to the draft. I just don't. And so yeah. I, I don't blame them, but if they do it, much respect to you. Um, my hat's off to you. I'm just saying I wouldn't blame them and I wouldn't sit there and call them cowards or blow them up or anything like that because they have a life to live too. And they yeah. just kind of got told their whole season didn't count. That's just, that's, that's my two cents. Yeah. It's yeah. not fair to anyone on the team. It's not. Yeah. I'm going to give the opposite take on that. I, I mm -hmm. agree 100% with the sentiment she's given. And like, if you're a player and you have, to sit out, yeah, hell yeah. I'm not going to hold that against you, but I think kind of Mike Norvell and the way they run this thing, I think these guys are fired up to get out on the field. Like, we're all pissed off, and they were pissed off for the first week, but I think those dudes are going to be fired up. I don't think the, the issue is the guys that go to the portal. I think that's where you find the problem. Same thing with Georgia. You've got 15, you know, top, you know, 
for them, five star, four star dudes hitting the portal. We've got 15 or 16 three stars hitting the portal. I think the issue is the fourth quarter is what I wonder about. I wonder what happens like all year. Florida State has been this team that got you down to the fourth quarter, grounded your ass in the ground, and that was it. It was already going to be tough to do that to a Georgia, but then when you lose kind of some of that depth off the back of it, it makes it really tough. You had a situation. Did you have a situation like that at Florida in between the titles where y'all had, you know, had to worry about motivation and getting guys opting out and stuff? I know it wasn't a big of a deal back then in the late 2000s. Yeah, nobody opted out back then. I'd never even heard of it until like 20 – I mean, we had a kid in 2013 – it was it wasn't a thing even in 2013 but he opted out of the orange bowl because he was going to be a first round corner and we had to play like sammy watkins and all the freak shows at clemson and he just kind of sat that one out <laughs> because he was injured but he's still playing in the nfl so it might have been a smart decision um but yeah back in 2007 we played michigan in a bowl game and it was a hell of a situation because one we just won the natty basically everyone that actually won the natty left and about we just had a bunch of young entitled fucks on our team that thought they won a natty when they didn't really do shit. And so we, I think we led three losses in, in 2007 and we ended up playing Michigan in the, in the capital one bowl uh, in Orlando. And that Michigan team was the Michigan team that lost to Appalachian state in week one. And what I didn't know at the time, but I now know because a good friend of mine was on that Michigan staff is they were like riddled with injuries, like b- big injuries, like, and big numbers all year. And then of course, they all got healthy for the bowl game. Mm-hmm. And so we played a Michigan team that no one had seen all year. And they just, they, they beat the brakes off of us. But yeah, it was definitely a, it was a team that kind of was a front running team, right? They thought they were X, Y, Z. And in reality, they weren't. And so it, it was a nice learning opportunity that kind of led to what happened in 2008, winning it again. But yeah, that, that was, I mean, these bowl games are interesting because you get teams like Georgia and Florida state. It's like, how good is Florida state? Well, we don't really know. I mean, we know they're not as good without Jordan Travis. Certainly it won't be as good without some of their key pieces that are going to sit out or, mm-hmm. you know, or just, you know, go to the draft and not play, but he also, they, they, they haven't really played anyone. I mean, they could be, they could have been the best team in the country with Jordan Travis, but they might not have been. And that's why these bowl games are always so intriguing because you're going to get to see Washington have to play Texas. And it's like, all right, Washington could be fraudulent. I know they're 13 and 0, but they might not be what everyone thinks they are. No doubt. What do you man. think about um what do you think about y'all's bowl game versus Missouri? I mean, I, Buckeye fans are excited about it for for a couple yeah. of reasons. One, no one has said they're opting out yet, and the majority of people who would opt out have said they're playing. Now they're waiting on Marvin Harrison Jr. and I have said it every show and I'll say it again on your show, he's not playing. He's going okay. to the NFL. Let's not be fucking re- just ridiculous here. Um but they're excited because of the quarterback change. It doesn't matter what the fuck happens or who plays. They just want to see Devin <laughs> Brown. They don't they right? want to watch guys without <laughs> Kyle McCord. So honestly, <laughs> Kyle transferring just drove the ratings of this bowl game through the roof cuz Buckeye fans are I mean they're eager for it. You you would think we made the playoffs up here in Columbus. I can't wait for that bowl game. I think it's great. And you know, I um people sat there and criticized, and I know Florida's defense hadn't been great, right? All mm-hmm. year, um, because of what Tate and and the team did. And I I I honestly said about that game, a backup going into the swamp at night, his first start on the road with playoff on the line. To me, that proved that that was a great coaching job. That was a great, and I know Florida wasn't great, but you know as well as I do that the swamp at night with a hundred thousand people—that's a tough place to play, oh, yeah. no question. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. So they got um, killed because of the points scored on that Florida defense. But the week before, that Florida defense gave Missouri this prolific offense, mm-hmm. everything they could handle, mm-hmm. and that was. That was, I mean, Florida almost won that game. Yeah. And so for me, I, I like this matchup for Ohio State. Um, I think they're going to, I mean, I, I think they're going to win big. I'm sorry. I think they're going to win big. I loved Ohio State's defense this year. Um, I, I just, I know that it had been questioned, I guess, a little bit a couple of years ago or last couple of years. The defense wasn't as good as it usually was, yeah. although I didn't see that, but. Um, yeah, last year it, it, people get jaded by the Michigan game last year, and then Georgia mm-hmm. obviously put up whatever 51 points on on the defense. Um, in the, in y'all the playoff, had a kicker but, that could kick, yeah, if they had a kicker that could hit a 50 yarder, they 
be sitting there with a nice trophy and a ring. <laughs> that, that was the worst miss. I, who was it? Who said that? I heard somebody say they think that that kicker was on um, Georgia's payroll. Like payroll. Yeah. <laughs> I had to have been. My <laughs> word. I was Jeez. at a concert and like I was watching it because it really wasn't a concert I was interested in. So I'm like at a concert, like watching it and just going, are you? Oh. Uh. We had a we had a watch party. You want to? We had like five hundred people at a watch party in this badass location in Columbus, and it was literally like when he missed that kick. I mean, this place was rocking. I mean, people were having a blast. Ohio State's putting up points. People were taking shots, like, like <laughs> sneaking in the back to hook up. Like it was wild. And then he missed that kick, and it was like everyone just like tucked their tail between their legs. And were like, "Hey, thanks for having this," and they just like yeah. fucking left. I was like, "Oh, that." If they if he'd hit that field goal, I don't know if I'd be alive. <laughs> yeah, that's right up there with that Michigan punter that gave up the game to Michigan oh, State. Oh yeah. my gosh, I was at a Florida State hit- game, hammered, and like feeling my way down a chain link fence, and I was like, oh, look, watch the end of this game. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you want to you want to know a crazy a crazy story about that? And I didn't realize this until I went uh, I went recruiting after the season that year. So I'm on a plane, and I'm sitting. I'm so pissed still that we didn't make the playoffs. You know, I thought we, you know, I, I thought we'd have won it all. And we basically didn't make the playoffs because Michigan did that because right. they, Michigan state has that loss. We go to the big 10 championship game. When we win it, we're going to go to the playoffs. And so I was salty for like the team and success. And then I started thinking about my own contract and I was the lowest paid coach on staff, but that punter <laughs> dropping that ball cost me $50,000 me. Oh. And I'm, and then I start thinking about, I'm the wow. lowest paid guy. I'm like, Holy shit, that probably cost Luke Fickle like 250 grand. Like that fuck that punter. <laughs> oh my god. That see that's so wild. You never think about stuff like that. Just like, well, how about Auburn giving up the 4th and 31? Right. Cost Florida State getting in the playoff. Right. There you go. We wanted Bama so fucking bad that year. We wanted Bama so bad we could taste it after hearing all that, you know, SEC stuff for years and years. It's like y'all went down so we couldn't prove it against y'all. Auburn was gone. It's like just give us Bama, and of course the kick six, and of course to this oh, day, that one, yeah. that's what you hear. Yeah. If you'd have played Bama, you know, y'all just Auburn got lucky. It's like oh, whatever. All we can do is beat who's in front of us, and they had our calls for the first three quarters of the damn game. <laughs> well, and also, I mean, we talk about this all the time, so I'm not going to get all the way into it. But Florida State fans are a little jaded. Michigan, we got to talk like, the cheating scandal before I forget. Oh I yeah, we will bring that up. But um, we're a little jaded towards ESPN because that 2013 season, it was Florida State sucks because they haven't they beat teams by too much. They beat teams by too much. They have right. had they haven't had any adversity in 2014. It's game control. You're beating teams, but not by enough. Not by enough, guys. You're not beating them by enough. So and it it's always something like that. And so that's why we're a little uh, it's a little weird. sensitive. It's all narrative driven. When ESPN sends yeah. out a memo to every single on-air personality that they need to, you know, push the narrative that Florida State doesn't belong and Alabama deserves it, there's a reason. They were going to lose 150 million dollars if if the SEC was left out of the playoffs. They're not losing 150 million dollars. Like, I don't care what happens. They're under the table, giving a couple million to all the fucking committee members. However, it went down. It was never going to happen. And I said yeah. it on my show. Long before the playoffs, I said the the worst thing that could ever happen is Bama beating Georgia because you know if Georgia beat Bama, Florida State was going to get in because Georgia was going to be in. So they didn't care who the other teams were; they got their SEC team in. But if Bama beats Georgia, and when they did, it's Florida. I, I said it from the jump. The minute Jordan Travis got hurt, Florida State's about to get fucked in a big I, way. I said it. I actually said it that night on this show. Um, we did it after game and florida state fans weren't ha- i was i was trying to prepare them i said <laughs> i was pissed i'm cussing jen out because she's yeah, saying he was look, they're gonna leave it i'm like look you're talking about a conversation between the one losses this is not a fucking conversation between florida state we're undefeated we're one of the three auto ends and this is like how i can bring in the cheating scandal it's like how is it that michigan <laughs> worst strength strength the schedule this whole fucking scandal you want to talk our quarterback there their coach hasn't been there half the year how the hell like how are they auto in in washington you think if oregon state or wazoo was the undefeated pack team that they would have got in over florida state no way in hell. It's like, no. like how how is yes, there no repercussions for that? They say, oh, well, you know, 
uh, cheating and all that is an NCAA, a double, NCAA problem. But they're they're sure quick to you know enforce any kind of crack in Florida State to get their ass out of there. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, it's uh, Buckeye fans didn't want to hear it, but when the Michigan stuff started, they're like, oh, they're not going to let them. Like they're going to forfeit games and they're not going to let them go to the Big Ten championship game. Blah blah. I was like, yeah, the fuck? Yes, they are. Like, th yeah. there's never been an NCAA scandal where they get punished right now. It always takes forever. So Michigan could win it all. It's getting vacated, but and what and what a blemish to the NCAA that they have a national champion that they knew cheated that went they're they're allowing to continue to play and go on. And if they win it, shit, they already won the Big Ten. They're gonna have to vacate that. They're gonna have to vacate all these wins, and but it's just it's just the nature of the beast. That's their process. It's crazy the process that and, and what pisses everybody off. Why everybody's so obsessed? So they did the process one way for nine years, mm -hmm. and then it's like here we come in the penultimate year when this isn't even going to be a problem next year. You say that, but they did the it process. It will be a problem. They said they did the process exactly how they have always done the process, and that's with SEC bias and <laughs> with their own their own pockets in mind. The same reason why Ohio State played Georgia in the semifinals after TCU lost to Kansas State because they didn't want an Ohio State-Michigan rematch. They wanted the SEC team to have the better ratings because Georgia-TCU, who would have tuned in? I would have watched for a couple quarters, and it would have been 700 to nothing, and we would have turned it off. They thought about yeah. their 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 dollars, their bottom line. That's what they've always thought about. It just, unfortunately, Florida State was, was the drive-by shooting victim. <laughs> It was just the first time you had three undefeateds like this. And two. it was just usually like when Cincinnati, like, and we like to bring that up, but when Cincinnati made it, you had all these three loss conference yeah, champions yeah. and stuff. It was just like all the, everything aligned in the world to, to screw over Florida state. And when you had people on there for a month selling a bill of goods, you know, it didn't help, but guys, if you want to yeah. get any questions in with Zach, me and Jen, before we get out of here, be at Florida State or anything you want to ask Zach uh, about Minister Sports, anything like that, get them in. The phone line's open. Uh, you can text, call, whatever you want. But uh, yeah, you're running out of time quick. So my thing is, is like with people trying to compare the Ohio State situation um, with Cordell Jones to Florida State. And to me, it's not the same situation um, because Ohio State had a loss to Virginia Tech at home that mm -hmm. year. And, and by the way, they should have been in. There's no question they should have been in, but they needed those style points going into that Wisconsin game. They knew that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So with Florida State, they re-ranked them at four going into that Louisville game. They re-ranked them at four. Um, they played a higher-ranked team in Louisville than Texas did at Oklahoma State, who was beat down by San Diego State and um, UCF, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so... I don't know that the coaches really thought, hey, um, we need to really put some numbers up because I, ju I just don't think they did. I, I don't think they did. I think that's what is really ticking them off about it because with Ohio State, they knew what they needed to do. Yeah. Florida State was undefeated, played a higher ranked team, and then got moved down and jumped by teams ranked seven and eight. <laughs> and I just don't know how to, how do you explain that? Like you just, I honestly think well, that the committee. You're, you're, you're trying to justify the unjustifiable, right? Yeah. There's one justification, really two. They weren't, ESPN was not losing $150 million. And this was the perfect worst case scenario that is going to justify their 12 team playoff next year. That's all yeah. it was. I mean, you literally, Jen, you can sit there all day till you're blue in the face and talk about it. You'll never find a justification because they're fucking one. They're just one. We're going to be like those the, the people from uh, Ace Ventura Laces Out. We're just going to be like freaked out. Like Florida State fans are going to have it written on our wall. Like <laughs> Bama losing to Georgia. Bama needs to lose to Georgia. Bama needs to lose, you know, like in lipstick. It's going to yeah, be really absolutely. scary. You're going to be like the guy from uh, Billy Madison, crossing people yeah. off the list, putting lipstick on. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm probably on quite a few people's top 10 lists. I'm not going to lie about that. <laughs> well, it's a story for another day, I, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, not in that way. I'm, I'm talking about, like, in the murder way. I'm talking yeah. about in the murder way. Oh, we're back on murder again. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. It must be that type of girl that watches like murder documentaries every day. She was, Oh, my God. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> there are some good ones out there. There are some really, really good ones. But, uh, you know, the transfer portal, you know, we've talked about it off and on. The transfer portal, NIL, really the one-time transfer mm. portal, or not the one, the one-time transfer rule to me is what 
just completely just screwed everything up. Because to me, when you look at it, and we talk about it all the time, high school recruiting is king. Mm-hmm. But you got to, like, you can't end those relationships. You got to be like, whatever, you, you're choosing Ohio State, you got to just end on good terms. Because next year, oh. he's right on the fucking streets again. And to me, this is just to me, and I want to get your take on it. To me, what's more valuable? A guy who can come in and he's a true freshman and he can not like you, you coach him too hard, he's down there the next year, or a guy who is a red shirt freshman transfer who no longer has the one time transfer in his pocket. And now he's in a situation like he was 10 years ago, a regular situation. Like yeah. it seems to me like a red shirt freshman transfer is the hottest commodity in college football in this day and age, unless he's just such a pussy that <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying. But well, that was my. My kind of dramatic overreaction take when it first when I first read through the rules, I was like, if I'm Ohio State, outside of the five star kid, you got to you got to recruit that kid. But if you're like a fringe kid, I'm sending you to Cincinnati. Like go go to Cincinnati for a year, start play. We'll we'll come grab you after you. You're not going to play here as a freshman. Go get on the field, and we'll get you in a year. You'll get better NIL, better. And now we create a minor league system because when you come to me, you're mine, bitch. You can't go anywhere. I'm gonna coach you hard as shit. And what are you gonna do? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely. Your back's up against the wall. A guy like a lot like Kyle McCord going to Syracuse. Mm -hmm. He's got one year of eligibility left. He can't transfer again. Fran Brown's got it. Great. He can tell his dad, Mm -hmm. Hey, go fuck yourself. Don't call me ever again. (laughs) What what are they going to do? Like not play football. Absolutely. It's like what we do to South Carolina. You know, we send the kids to South Carolina and then we take them. Right. Farm farm school. Absolutely. It's it's a hell of a deal. Jaheim Bell's pretty good. Wasn't he? (laughs) Yeah. Brady I mean, Fisk, look, we, we had us it. a freaking Big Ten defensive tackle this year. That was nice. You just <laughs> got to get some of them offensive linemen down here. Yeah, that helped. But that's, Lord that's have my mercy. Guy, Alex Atkins. He'll get them. Oh, yeah. So you're a big Alex Atkins fan, huh? We feel like mm-hmm. my take on He's it, a Pat Sertain fan, too, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We will definitely get into Pat Sertain right after Alex Atkins. Alex Atkins, to me, I think we got him one, maybe two years. I think probably 25 or 26. He's a head coach somewhere. But I think, yeah. and, and maybe you can tell us better or have some insight being a coach. You think he's one of these guys like Dilly who will go be a coordinator uh, for a year or two and then take that job? Or do you think he's pretty much, he can just wait for the, you know, nah, whatever, he, take his he, choice of the job? Just in my conversations with him, he's, you, you, you couldn't, I've never talked to a guy that is more, like satisfied with the head coach he's working for than than Alex is with Mike Norvell. Like he talks about him like this dude is fucking like the best coach that ever lived. Mm-hmm. And um, he actually called me there in Columbus, both of them like a week ago. I don't know what for some transfer kid, uh, maybe from Columbus that was transferring. I don't know. But um, yeah, Alex, Alex is going to be a head coach um, being a young, young, black, brilliant fucking checks mm-hmm. all the boxes. Like he's going to be a head coach in, in a year or two. Um, but no, he's he's not going to leave unless he gets a head coaching job that he that he really loves. I know that much. I know everybody listening right now loves to hear that, and I just I agree with him. I think he's like he's just he's that star. When you like you talked about it a couple of times, how bad we were towards the end of your time at you know um, <laughs> at Ohio State when Willie Taggart was here. Like that deep offensive line, if you pull up the stats, is like historically maybe the worst offensive line ever. I mean, we had four. Like there's, I believe that year there was 799 offensive linemen in the FBS or Power Five, I forget which. But he, we were, we had 798, 795, 793, 791, and we had one guy that was like three or four hundred. And Atkins came in those next two years with a lot of the same people, and I mean he really, he really did a miracle job with. He's one of the best coaches I've ever been around. He was, he was our GA at Marshall when I was there, and um, you could just tell, dude, dude was brilliant. He, he just he studied his ass off like he was the only person there i mean we just won a nat- two national championships at florida i get hired i'm let's see i was 25 years old um a full-time division one coach which is probably I, I don't i don't know this but i might have been probably the youngest in, in the country and so i came in the doc holiday put together his staff we sit down as an offense and if there was one person no one was trying to listen to was the 25 year old and the second person <laughs> they weren't trying to listen to was fucking alex atkins because he was a ga and so him and I would just talk and he would, I mean, he, you could tell he studied our offense at Florida. Like he was asking questions. I'm like, yo, how the fuck do you know that? Like what? <laughs> and then we had conversations. I was like, this dude is brilliant. He's going to be a star. And it, lo and behold, right. I was at Ohio state. He's the offensive coordinator at Florida state. I don't know where those guys at Marshall are, but they're not at Florida state or Ohio state. <laughs> they didn't want to listen to anything we had to say. 
No doubt. The difference, like, and you, I love doing this, going back and looking at coaches who came up through the ranks through mm-hmm. these, you know, smaller programs. You go look at what he did at Charlotte and his oh, yes. offensive, like, numbers. Yeah. It is unreal. Everything that the history of the program before and afterwards pales in comparison to whatever yeah. the 18 months, 24 months he was there. Just yeah. beautiful. But uh, Pat Tertain, different deal. He came in and he had some studs. He had some dudes to work with. But, man, what he's done with the studs he had, and on the trail is like unprecedented. Has, has there ever been a DB coach or any kind of position coach to just come in and be like five star, five star, five star, best DB class in the nation, number three I pass mean, defense in the nation? Like he's the black heart woo. line. <laughs> he's yeah, he's right? the black heart line. I mean, he's got the name. His son's the best corner in the league. Like he, American Heritage was, I mean, when he left, they fell apart and they're going to fall apart even more. They just fired my guy, uh, Mario's their offensive coordinator. So about to be a bad deal for American Heritage. But it, between him and Mike Rumpf, they had that place cooking. And, and I, I love Sertain. Yeah, yeah I, I, your show is like my go to during the week. Uh, um, I always listen live and, and everything. But you had a story on when Florida State called about Ohio State's current um oh yeah yeah uh, who oh shit who was that about oh it was about kj bolden oh yeah yeah, yeah. About, and they um, wanted to ask about their, yeah, yeah. yeah they, they called and asked asked my opinion of perry eliano because they were trying to figure out if they should hire him how you know how tight in he was to kj and that, that, I, I would imagine that's when they brought certain in instead right uh-huh yeah and i was just like i i mean if I was hiring, I know who I'd hire. <laughs> <laughs> and for the yeah, and I, faithful, KJ Bowden, Bolden, all that Auburn smoke has uh, dissipated pretty strongly. So, looks as pretty I said yesterday, you could tell that, or Friday, you could tell that from the photos from the in home. Sorry, Absolutely. you could just tell. Yeah, but you they don't know. Fire. Apparently, Perry Eliano is going to the family family barbecue this weekend. He he's getting that kid to flip to Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe as long as we get Jared a nephew, we, we better leave with something. If I had a nephew that was a five star and that motherfucker <laughs> didn't come to Ohio State, Urban Meyer would have fired me the day that he signed anywhere else. And like, yeah, I, I 100% agree with you. That's wild. That um, that's his like blood. I mean, is it his nephew or cousin? I don't know, but they're like close. Yeah, it's his nephew. Like, no, you, like you're not coming to the cookout anymore. Like, we're not family anymore. <laughs> It's so crazy, but I love that story because I've heard such good things about Pat Sertain, and a lot yeah. of these kids want to play for him. Um, it's, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I guess KJ is going to stick, but I, George got off and, you know, he doesn't like when I uh, talk about, uh, uh, what's his name? Hugh Freeze. But um, it was like the photos, uh, I'm being a total girl here, but when you look at the photos and they're in home with Georgia and um, Florida state and then Auburn, to me, it looked like Georgia is more in there than Auburn did just by the looks on the family's faces. Yeah. To me, it looked like they were kind of freaked out with the other coaching staff. They were like, mm. yeah, like I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. This isn't working for me, but um, all right. So what about the kid? Is it, who is the one? Oh, is it Lyle's Lyle? Mm. Mm. that's Ohio state that people are saying is going to flip to Miami or did he already flip to Miami? Oh, the running back. Yeah. He's flipping to Miami. Okay. I don't know if he has or hasn't, but, but that's what the, that's what the running back coach of Ohio state told me. <laughs> said he said, Oh my he, God. And so how does that happen? NIL. They just, they paid, they paid to get more than Ohio state can. And, and it was enough to get his attention. They did it a year before with Mark Fletcher. They, the kid, yeah, was, I knew that. Ohio state for 11 months. And they just came in with this massive amount of NIL money. And the kid was like, I'm sorry, I have to I'm, like, I have to go to Miami. I mean, I can't blame them, you know, obviously, yeah, but you know, it's, it's tough. I mean, you'd love to say, listen, like you go to Ohio state, become the starting running back. Like you're talking about like generational money. You go to Miami for what is a much smaller bag. Is that really the smart decision? But at the same time, it might be a difference maker today for the kid, for his family. And so it's like, I don't ever knock the kid. I just knock sleaze balls like John Ruiz and these people. It's like, what are you? What is it, slavery? You're buying kids now? Like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. I don't. I, it, originally, it was instituted as you're like you're not allowed to do nil deals 
you know, for recruiting. Like you can't get kids right. to come to your school and promise them money. I don't know why they're not enforcing that because that was the one thing they they could not do. Don't let that happen. If you don't let that happen, this might work out. You let that happen, it's going to be a shit show. And they're letting it happen. It's a, uh, it is kind of, I mean, and we were talking, we all mentioned Georgia earlier and I don't know if anybody saw Aaron Murray's tweet. Did you guys see it? Mm -mm. Oh, um, you may want to go look because he's talking about what the hell's going on at Georgia. Players are flipping, um, five-star players are hitting the portal. I mean, that's Aaron Murray saying that. That's yeah, right. kind of strange, but I think it has more to do with these players who are currently in the system that say, hey, I can, I, it's almost like they don't care about what school they're playing for because they know what the market is for them, right? Yeah. And I, yeah. I can't say I blame them because again, you could just go get hurt and your life is, I mean, make the money you can make right now. And I'm yeah. maybe I'm too much of a populist for people in this scenario, <laughs> but I feel like if these kids can make the money, you're supposed to just go do it, go do it. I, yeah. I can't I hate mean, on you for that. No. And, is, and if you can get to your end, your end, end goal and make more money in college with the, with the risk of injury, I, I don't see, I mean, we, we saw with Ohio state, I don't know what they got done, but they, they got a, a, a freshman corner who kind of became the third corner. Really good player. He's going to be a great player before it's all said and done. The minute they lost to Michigan, that next day he was like, all right, it's about time. Somebody better pay. I know my value. Like he's on Twitter popping off like crazy. He's like, God damn, shut up. <laughs> but the kid's not wrong. He's like, hey, you saw, I'm going to be a great one. Uh, bitch, where's my money? <laughs> I, the ones I worry about are the ones who are such stars. If they go to the wrong staff, you know, maybe they could – get out of the first round, you know, and yeah. then get kind of in a worse deal. That's the only ones that I would worry about. And that, but that's, I think the ones that are going to be in the first round probably have better people behind them anyway. So, you know, it might be a wash. There could be a couple of kids. I, you know, I know Travis Hunter, we, we've brought him up. That's one that worries me. I feel like he could have been a number one pick easy peasy lemon squeezy, no matter what. But his injuries, that team, who knows what an NFL staff is going to, and he's very small, you know, it's just, that's a, that's a weird one for me because yeah. I don't know how it's going to work out. I'm, I, I could come across as a hater, but really it's more about his injury prone. He's, well, he's playing, he's playing 120 snaps a game. That's what right? I'm saying. Yeah. That's where I'm going with it. If you went to Florida State, you wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> it goes back to what if he, Zach even said if he a went to Georgia, ago, yeah. honestly. It goes back to what Zach said a minute ago. It's about the damn adults around you. It's about mm -hmm. the Ruiz. It's about the uncle who needs his house built, so he's going to talk you into <laughs> yeah. going here or going there. It's kind of like Jim talked about with quarterbacks. Like, who's around you that's letting you go to Miami to go play quarterback right now? Like, somebody should be looking <laughs> out for your best interest and well, telling you to go go play somewhere that's quarterback friendly. But well, like just, the battle, then these these they're not gonna you know we had a, a local or a regional whatever you want to call, call it one of these guys that works on the big platforms compare a kid to a terrorist in U.S. like negotiating with terrorists like that's absolutely ridiculous and we're so far away from that here like Jen said like look you're not gonna keep like the starters or and people like just doing like really hairy stuff leaving for one year to get money that sucks but a lot of this and ninety percent of what's going on in the portal is a guy who's third string and just can see the writing on the wall. He has an exit interview, and he's just probably not going to sit on the field. Could he yeah. bust his ass and maybe somebody gets injured and he goes on to run his senior year? But no, he's going to leave Florida State and go to Charlotte and try to get his snaps. And I'm all for that. But, but yeah, the, the life wallets of the world – uh, it's, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty um, sad. They they get these 360 deals. I don't know if you have any personal knowledge about that, but they get these kids on these 360 deals like record companies and they get you at Miami or somewhere and you're screwed. You don't make 50 cent. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 we've allowed it, right? They put these rules in place that we're supposed to safeguard all this. They enforce none of them. It's like, well, what the fuck do you think is going to happen? Like, obviously this is what, what the end result's going to be. Yeah. No doubt. Well, guys, this has been an absolute blast. Um, usually we have a ton of questions. Nobody has brought any questions for us. I think they're scared of you, Zach. I think they're scared. <laughs> <laughs> so no bunch of questions today. 
Uh, but we're at a minute and 34. Is there anything you wanted to uh, ask Zach before we got out of here? Uh, I think I got it out. I was asking about, um, I know I asked about the running back. That was interesting. We talked about Jeremiah Smith. Um, him and I agree on it. So, okay. You know, I, hopefully I'll be surprised. I just. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. Uh, NK asks, what is this Big Ten talk in January? We talked about this at the or February. We talked about it at the beginning of the show. Everybody knows August 15th is the deadline if you're going to be in a different conference by 2025. So the rumors, all the rumors I'm hearing, uh, if we're going to get an announcement from Florida State or the Big Ten or anything like that, it would be sometime in February. Um, so if you don't so, hear that in February, you can wait till August, most likely. I do think there's going to be an announcement. Um I've been told February, but uh, the coaches and everybody else wants it to be earlier. So we'll tune in to see. <laughs> Never know when it's official, right? Yep. Absolutely. And and honestly, all this stuff gets done in the dead of night anyway. You'll see like a uh, like a column from Brett McMurphy the night before, and then it'll just happen, you know? Yep. So that's just how that goes. Um, but – Honestly, I've been on the Big Ten train the whole time. I've never been about this SEC bullshit because I live here. I deal with these <laughs> MFers all the time. You know, Tennessee fans, I think, have now been taken over by Miami fans with their delusion because I think Tennessee has now been so irrelevant since 98. <laughs> they can't. They really just don't have anything else to say. Um, but they try. Believe me, they try. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I live here. I live in SEC country. And everybody else around me, why don't you want to be in the SEC? You don't want to compete? That has nothing to do with it. <laughs> People are just weird. <laughs> and I am not going to sit here in a stadium and be like, S like I would never conference cheer. <laughs> I'm never. sorry. I hope my rivals lose every game they play. I don't care. I'm not going to sit. No, I'm just not doing it. I'm not doing it. I hear you. <laughs> I'm All right, Greg, man, let the, let the folks know uh, where they can find you, everything he's going, that's going on. I know we talked about your new show, but. Uh, yeah, so it, a lot like you guys, everything's on YouTube um, and podcasts, anywhere you can find a podcast, iHeart, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all those different channels. Um, it's called Menace to Sports. Check it out. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. It was an Thank absolute you so much. blast. We got into everything. Menace to Sports, guys. Uh, I'm sure you're probably already over there, but if you're not, Go subscribe. Make sure you subscribe and like here, and we will catch you guys next time. Thank you.